I'm going to go through five teams this year who are guaranteed to disappoint this season. Absolutely, they're going to be worse than you think. We have the reasons. We have the stats behind it. So without further ado, let's get into our first team. This is an easy one. It's the Minnesota Timberwolves. Why? Well, they're losing maybe the best player on the entire team, depending on how you scale Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler. But when Jimmy Butler leaves, this team just lacks an elite wing. Now, maybe the weirdest thing I've seen from our YouTube fans out there is y'all defending Andrew Wiggins. Like, of, of all players for, for people to defend, of all players to really, you know, to stake yourselves on, the it's Andrew Wiggins? The guy who is perennially disappointed every single season of his career and has never lived up to the potential of being the number one overall pick and got a max contract without us actually being sure if he's good? It's kind of interesting. Now, what they're losing in Jimmy Butler is not they're not just losing a piece on the offensive end. They're losing the best defensive player on the entire team. And if you look at the Timberwolves record with Jimmy Butler last season and without, it is scalding. With Jimmy Butler last year through 50 games, they were the three seed in the West. Far and away the third best team in the Western Conference. Like, without a question, they were roasting teams. Jimmy Butler goes down, they barely make the playoffs as the eighth seed in the West. Without Jimmy Butler for an entire season, I will be surprised if this Timberwolves team is even 500. My projected record, I cut them down by six games. My projected record for them right now is 42 and 40, and I think I'm being nice. I'm trying to be nice there to the Timberwolves fans because I know how much it must suck to lose Jimmy Butler right now. But overall, I just cannot see the Timberwolves actually being good this season. Let's go to my next team, guaranteed to disappoint. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. I say that not because we think that they're good. It's because they seem to think that they're good. Tristan Thompson still thinks that the Eastern Conference goes through Cleveland. It doesn't Tristan Thompson at all. Like 0% goes through Cleveland. I don't even think they're, they, I honestly would be surprised if they win 30 games this year. I really will. Kevin Love is not in Minnesota anymore. He is not the same player. He doesn't have as many players around him that's going to be able to take some pressure off him. This Cavs team, you know, they have Colin Sexton at, you know, at point guard. He's going to be a nice rookie, but he's going to have so many mistakes this year. It just happens with every rookie point guard. They're going to sell off a lot of their older players. Probably Kyle Korver will go. I have to imagine George Hill will get traded as well. This Cavs team is going to be a disaster. I actually think they might end up being even worse than they think, not to mention Tyron Lue isn't a very good head coach. So watch out for the Cleveland Cavaliers this year to just, just be terrible. They're, they're going to be terrible. Be surprised if they win 30 games this year. Let's go to our next team. It's the Los Angeles Clippers. I've been banging the table all offseason long. This team is not going to be good. Their team is weird. It doesn't make any sense. How the roster is constructed is blasphemous. They have too many point guards. They don't have any big men. Their wings are average. And they have too many old guys. It, just, it doesn't make any sense. Why did they draft Jerome Robinson after giving Lou Williams and Avery Bradley an extension? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. This Clippers team is not going to be good this year. They're not. And I've seen a bunch of playoff predictions everywhere having the Clippers as a seven or eight seed. How? How is this team with this lineup going to end up as a seven or eight seed in the Western Conference? Milos Teodosic is going to end up missing games this year. Marcin Gortat doesn't care about basketball anymore. Danilo Gallinari has about an 80% chance of getting injured again. Patrick Beverly is likely going to get traded. I have no idea what the minutes are going to look like with Shea Gildish Alexander or Jerome Robinson. This whole Clippers team is just a Frankenstein's monster of a bad NBA team. I have them as a projected record of 34 and 48, and I will be impressed if they end up making it that far. Bet the aside title odds at plus 17,000. Probably not a team that you want to put money down on, but if there is a team that you want to put money down on, it is the Boston Celtics. Use that promo code LIVE120 at chatsports.com slash bet. A lot of great teams to put money down on with those final odds. Again, the Warriors are minus 300 on Bet the Aside to win the finals right now. You can get a lot of great deals if you think they're not going to be able to make it all the way. Again, head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code LIVE120. Let's get to our next team. I'm sorry, people. Another weird... I want to defend this team YouTube channel, whatever, is the Washington Wizards. Now, I won't lie. This is probably the best roster that they have ever surrounded John Wall with. Why should we expect anything out of the norm except the Washington Wizards messing something up? Because isn't it just 
wildly expected that this team is going to disappoint. The Wizards have never, never lived up to the expectations of their team. Never. They have two top 10 players at their position right now, arguably even three if you're a big Otto Porter guy. And John Wall, Bradley Beal, and like I said with Otto Porter, I still think Dwight Howard is a great, you know, a good player. I don't think he's going to fit well with the Wizards, but right now in their starting lineup, they have at least two, if not maybe four top 10 players at their position in their starting lineup. But this is the Wizards. They have never lived up to the hype. Not a single time since they've drafted John Wall. Not once. The only time they ever even got close was them losing to a far, far, you know, less superior team in terms of talent in the Boston Celtics with Isaiah Thomas. I don't care how many games that team won in the regular season. That Wizards team had more talent than the Celtics. The best player in the Celtics was Isaiah Thomas, and they had no one else on that team. They had a Jalen Brown who wasn't ready for prime time, Marcus Smart who still couldn't shoot. This Wizards team should be one of the three best teams in the East this upcoming year but they're not going to, because that's just how the Wizards do. If you want something that won't disappoint you, it's these Miz and Main button-down shirts. Head to comfortable.af right now. Do it right now. I'm gonna take a second. Did you do it? Because if you've done it, you're already as comfortable as I am. I sleep in these, I eat in these, I go out in these, I work in these. These Miz and Main shirts are so unbelievably comfortable. Get yours today at www.comfortable.af. Let's get to my last team who I think is going to disappoint this year. I, I'm, the, I'm sure I'll get roasted for this one. It's the Philadelphia 76ers. So the word disappointment has a lot of different meanings depending on the team. What would you classify as a disappointing season for the Philadelphia 76ers? For me, a disappointing season would classify as them not making the Eastern Conference Finals. Or maybe them not even making the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. This is not an Eastern Conference Finals team. It's not. Now, I know that Markel Fultz has looked good in preseason so far. He shot a three, and NBA Twitter lost their damn minds last night. But overall, the Sixers team just doesn't have as much top-end talent on it after Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid as a lot of other teams do. Now, I like Dario Saric. I think he's a very good player. I think he's. I want to see him this year really take that next step in being a notable elite player. But overall, this team still needs one more star. They do. This was a very disappointing offseason for the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I don't think it, you know, it's difficult for a team to qualify a 50-win season as a disappointing season. And I understand that. But this is a, a Philadelphia 76ers team in a very top-heavy Eastern Conference. I think they are going to struggle against the Celtics. I think they're going to struggle against the Toronto Raptors. I think they're going to struggle against a team like the Indiana Pacers. That's incredibly deep and also very good on the wing, which they are not. I think this Sixers team is going to struggle to win games against good teams. And I think we're going to see that extend into the playoffs as well. I know that Ben Simmons is coming back for year two. I know that Embiid is hopefully going to have a full healthy season. I understand it. But this Sixers team in an Eastern Conference needed to make one more move to really cement themselves as a favorite to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. And they have not done that. I'm not, I, I like Brett Brown, but Brett Brown, the GM, greatly failed the 76ers this offseason. Now, if they get Jimmy Butler, obviously that turns everything on its head, but it seems like they're going to have to move Ben Simmons in order for that to be a realistic option. Let me know in the comments section below, what team will disappoint the most this season? Do you think it'll be the 76ers? Could it be the Golden State Warriors not winning the NBA Finals? That would certainly be a huge disappointment for them. Could it be the Houston Rockets or the Boston Celtics? Let me know in the comments section below. What team will disappoint the most this season? That's going to do it for NBA Now today. We won't be back with you guys this Thursday, but we will be back next week, Tuesday, at the same time.